Today on DXB Today, I am joined by none other than Jay Shetty at Atlantis, the Royal. Jay, how are you? I'm so good, Nimi. Thanks so much for having me. This is really weird for us because we're good <laughs> friends, but yes. we're going to try and be professional with this. Yes. Uh, this is so really exciting. Yeah, super <laughs> professional. Uh, this is so exciting. You are in town and I mean, Dubai loves it every time you come here. There is such an excitement and buzz for you. You're on your world tour at the moment. Uh, eight rules of love. Firstly, I want to ask you, why a book about love? Well, I want to say, Nimi, that I love being in Dubai, and Dubai's been so good to me since the beginning. I remember coming out for my first large event was in Dubai. My first time skydiving was in Dubai. Yeah. My first time zip lighting was in Dubai. There's so many great firsts that I have here, and I feel so connected to the community, the culture. And so thank you for having me, and thank you to everyone who's watching. I wrote a book about love because I feel like it's one of the areas in our life where we make such a big decision and literally like such a large percentage of our happiness is defined by the person we choose to spend our lives with. Yet we have no guidebook, we have no thoughts and tips and practical ways of navigating the challenges that come up. And so I saw so many of my friends who were happy in their professional lives, but they felt unfulfilled because they didn't have a partner. Mm -hmm. Or I found people who had really strong partners and even when they struggled in their professional lives, they had the resilience and the support to break through it. And so I started to find that all of us, what we're really searching for in our lives is love. Mm. And the challenge is that the way we've been taught to love or the way that we've experienced how to love hasn't really set us up for success. And so love ends up letting most of us down mm -hmm. as opposed to lifting us up and making mm. us feel good. And I have a question which I know a lot of people will be wanting you to answer in particular, which is, is a soulmate real? Is it a <laughs> thing? Is there one person in our life that is meant to be for us? Yes. Do you believe that? Let me, let me answer it. I don't want to say yes or no because okay. I feel like I'm going to upset a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So research shows that 70% of us believe in soulmates. And that is the idea that there is one person out there who's made for us, created for us. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we look and search and scour the planet for that one person. I don't think that's true. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's healthy. And I'll tell you why, because that means you might have to meet 7.999999 billion people one day, mm -hmm. and you're gonna wait for that one person, as opposed to the idea that what makes love so special is that you choose to make it work. I think we're confused because we're chasing this perfect person or this perfect partner. And the truth is the perfect partner or the perfect person doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. What exists is the person that you wake up next to every day and you choose to make it work with each other despite all your challenges and your flaws and your insecurities, but you choose to make it work. And that's why I think love is a choice. Mm -hmm. If love is predestined, then there's no choice which means it kind of loses how special it is mm. because you didn't choose to be together. Right. And I think knowing that someone chooses you and knowing that you choose them, that's what makes it special. And by the way, if someone doesn't choose you, they're not your person. Mm, yeah, it's the magic behind it all, isn't totally. it? And you have been very honest about your journey with love and the different types of love you've experienced along your, uh, along your time. But what would you say you've learned most recently about yourself when it comes to love? Anything that you've had to change or adjust? I think the biggest one that stands out when you ask that question is when I was loved when I was younger, so much of how I was loved was I was given a lot of love and affection, but then I was often made to feel guilty that I didn't love those people back equally. Mm. And what I realized a few years back was that I was repeating that pattern. So I was loving people in my life, particularly Radhi, my wife, and I would then make her feel guilty if I didn't feel the same amount of love back from her. And I think that that was a really unhealthy trait, but it's really interesting because we repeat the patterns of our parents, of our caregivers, of the people that we're surrounded by, and we repeat them in our marriages, in our relationships, causing more friction and rifts and creating a really unhealthy dynamic. And so when I saw that, when I learned that about myself, I realized that actually I just wanted to love Radhi in the way that I wanted to and she wanted to and not make it about feeling or making her feel like she wasn't giving the same amount back. And I think, I think all of us have a tendency to do that and it mm -hmm. comes from how we were loved. So I think that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned is don't repeat the wrong ways in which you were loved by your caregivers mm. 
make sure that you're choosing how you want to love and be loved. And that's one thing you and Radhi have been so vocal about, is that you're not this perfect couple. There is no yeah, such no. thing as a perfect couple. How important is that for you to get that message across? As massive, massive. Yeah. I, I just, I, I think, you know, even when you write a book about love, everyone's like, oh yeah, Jay knows everything. And it's like, I don't. I just spend a lot of time studying. I spend a lot of time researching for this book. I coached a lot of couples, working with them on their real dynamics. And so yes, everything in the book is tried and tested. Everything in the book is curated and researched to give you all the information. That doesn't mean that I've perfected all of it myself. Mm. And I don't think there is a perfect couple, just like there's not a perfect person. I don't think couple goals is what we think it is. I think couple goals is honest, difficult, uncomfortable conversations. I think couple goals is let's figure out how to deal with conflict. Let's talk about our values. Let's talk about what we both want from life. Like that's couple goals. It's not an Instagram picture in a beautiful setting. Like that's not couple goals. And so I think we need to redefine all of these statements because otherwise we're chasing something that doesn't exist. Mm, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being with us thank here you. today. You've dropped so many gems and uh, I'm sure so many people at home have benefited. And Dubai is just so happy to have you. So thank you so much. I'm really grateful too. Thank you, Nimi. Thanks so much. And thank you everyone who's been watching and listening.